Hola, it's your favorite Dominican here. I uh, want to talk a little bit about Sofia Vergara and the new controversy, right, uh, regarding her comments about her, you know, her show, Netflix, uh, Griselda. But her, comment, uh, her comments for the, for the ones that have brought some controversy right, were the ones on her accent and her saying that is very difficult because of her stupid accent, right? She can't play a certain characters she can't play a scientist if you want to look at what she said and who she is right and where she stands where she stands in society where she stands in hollywood right and and as an immigrant right you have to there are layers to it there are layers to it that you got to consider before casting judgment on her right because on one hand right i get it right i get it that for a lot of people it's difficult to hear the grievances of someone who's a multi-millionaire <laughs> of someone who at the time was the highest paid actor on TV for her role in, in Modern Family, which is in itself too, you, you know, there are people who have their valid uh, critiques about that role that she's playing in there. And also of Griselda, right? Of the character that she's playing. But it's also talk about the accent, right? We have to use, right? We have to use uh, certain uh, frameworks in order to speak about her, you know, social, political, racial lens. And one of the things that I see is like, because she's a woman, it's easy to be a lot harsher on her and her comments. Had she been somebody else, had she been a dude, I highly doubt people would have, would have been up in arms about it, right? Especially, and I'm talking, I'm, I'm speaking as someone as an immigrant with an accent, right? And someone who knows having an accent in this country, you know, it comes with a lot of, a lot of negativity, even from my own people. Have I came uh, to the States, right? I'm gonna give you a little example of, of my life. I came to the States when I was, you know, two months shy of turning 13 years old. Once you reach a certain age, if you are going to learn another language, it's going to be really difficult for you. I don't care what anybody says, you know, the science is there. It's, it's, if, if you're going to speak about certain things, you got to come right from, from something, be informed about it. Just don't, don't you just go on vibes and, and what you hear on podcasts or, or YouTube. Although you might learn a thing or two from them, but hey, for the most part, what are people going to gravitate to? Things that aren't really, yeah, but so Bobby, taking my baby here. You know, things that are juicy, right? Because this is people, the way that we've been conditioned is, it's easier. It's more for us, our palates, right? We'd rather consume what's juicy, right? What can make or destroy people? What can make them or break them? The studies are there, right? Uh, you know, if you get here, to the States, when you're older, right, you are going to have a difficult time learning the language, especially if you weren't exposed to it as a kid. I wasn't exposed to it. You know, I wasn't exposed to I didn't know a lick of English. I, I knew nothing. I knew nothing. Right? And I had to learn you know, a, a, hu a huge, a, a completely different cultures, not just a culture, because there's multiple cultures here, you know, grammar, spelling, pronunciation, which I still, you know, you can hear the accent, right? And, and some people, can hear a very deep, thick accent and others just hear a New Yorker, right? And others hear a combination of it. And you get it from your own people too. So it is true what she says, you get it from your own people too. For me, it's people exaggerating the the, the, the Spanish accent, right? Which is, you know, there's this comedy about it. It's, I think it's a low hanging fruit, right? Uh, it's just making fun of your own people, or making fun of your parents, making fun of immigrants, which is punching down. It's, I, I see it a punch, a punching down, whether, you know, people like it or not, it's, it's the truth. Do I think my career would have been way farther if I didn't have an, an, an accent? Of course I do. Of course I do. You think someone is me, right? And I'm going to go there, right? Because one of the things that Bell Hooks uh, says, you have to recognize your, your genius. You have to be love yourself enough to see certain things. And that's not, it's, it's not just coming from me, right? I am considered from a lot of people, from from all from academics, from the community, from MacArthur fellows, as 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 brilliant, right? As 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 a genius, as one of the few people within the community Latinidad, and, and could be the United States, one of the few that understands Latinidad, right? More than most people, more than most people, I can write about it, right? I can I can express myself, of course, in writing a lot better than I speak it. When people hear me speak, then. It already comes with a lot of prejuicios. Or it already comes with a lot of negativity. It already comes with with the things that we have of the, the uh, xenophobia. It comes with a lot, even from our own people, right? So once you hear a voice and an accent, you already hear there's something missing there. This person is not from here. E e even subconsciously, they're, they're missing the beat with the culture. I got somewhat, somewhat lucky, right? That it's not an extreme, right? Like, like Sophia, because I, I think some people say that she exaggerates. I don't really think so. I don't know. I've heard her speak, you know, 
outside of shows and, and interviews. I don't, I don't think she's exaggerating, exaggerating her accent, especially if she's learning a language at her age, right? When, after, I don't even know when, when, when she actually uh, learned uh, English. So yeah, so with me, I would have been in all your panels, right? I would have been be called by white America. White America would have tapped me already a long time ago, right? I'm validated by the community. I'm validated by the Latino community. I'm validated by the intellectuals within the community, by the Latino somewhat, right? Some who see the benefits of what I have to offer in regards to rhetoric, right? And are humble enough to, to understand that. With me, right, I would have been at another level. That is just the truth, right? Even grades, even when people grade you, there will be another level to, to, the, to the grade that, that, I, that I got in school, right? Uh, and I'm gonna give you an example of that. I went to film school in Queens College and I remember I was taking, I took some pretty high courses in, in, in anthropology, right? And in the high, the, the, the high levels there who were students studying anthropology, I was taking a class, which I was the head of, I, I aced all the tests, and it wasn't like just multiple choice. I had to answer in my own words, through my own words, I had to answer questions, right? And I was the head of the whole class. And once the professor found out that I was an immigrant, that I was Dominican, of course, and that I had a deep accent, what did he do? He couldn't understand why an immigrant, right? A kid from the ghetto, from the hood, because I had an Afro, right? I had an Afro, could surpass every student who have had all the benefits in the world, all the privileges in the world. How could I have surpassed them in understanding people and culture? So what did he do, right, when I was taking one of the tests because I just kept acing them. He sat me in front of the class because he was like, how could this kid be, you know, understand these concepts a lot more than these people? And he sat me there and I was like in front of the class just to see me responding to the questions. And that already gave me, you know, that already sent things to my head that, what what is he what is he doing what is he doing why is he doing that to me right uh, so that uh, that's gonna start messing with your grades and of course my grades went down after after that not because of I can understand the concepts that, that that we were studying but because he was the one that did that you understand what I'm saying it was a dude it was a dude but you know it, it goes that when it comes to xenophobia when it comes to uh, racism and all that it's 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 all from people man it's all all kinds of people it's, it's not that's not just uh, gender based you know so. That is an example of that, right? And I remember too, when I got out of school, right, I, I was doing uh, production, like production assistant, and I was, you know, looking for, for to volunteer uh, places. I remember I went, we went to, well, me and others, I went to this, this, uh, this internship, which it wasn't even on the record, working for a producer. And, you know, and there were like, I don't know, like 10 young people working there. And the guy who was doing the interviews, right, he was an American, American male, born and bred. He didn't pick me. He said, OK, thank you for coming. But the guy who was, I believe, I don't know if he was Russian or what, he said, he asked me, he pulled me aside, who was the boss of that guy? Because I don't know what it is with people who are, you know, middle management that I tend to be liked a lot more by people who are higher up there. Anyway, so he pulls me aside and he tells me, come back Monday. Right. And I'm like, OK. And I remember when he sat us all together, right, we were writing this, we were ghostwriting the script. He asked all the, all the young people that were there, right, all these smart, very smart people, what do you think of people with accents, right? And they all said, I think they're stupid. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm looking at them, I'm like, I'm sitting right here. I'm like, I'm, si I'm sitting right here next to you. And, and, and just thinking through my head, and I'm like, I'm, smart. I'm probably smarter than, than all of you combined. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, why, what is it, what is it even, with people that would consider themselves progressive and liberal, they have all these biases, all these the, the bigotry and prejudice, you know, and I'm pretty sure that's what Sophia is going through, right? What she experienced with her career. And of course, you know, people say she could play, of course she could play a, a scientist, but are they gonna give her the role of a scientist? Most of the people that pay, play scientists, right? A lot of scientists have, they're foreign, right? They're foreigners and they do have accents, uh, but they don't get picked. A lot of people, actors that have an accent don't get to, uh, picked to play scientists. What happens is that they choose someone from here, born and raised here, that speaks English fluently, to play some of an accent. And you guys know this, man. You guys, you guys know this. And that's, I, I think that's what she meant, right? I think so, that's what she meant. And I don't think we should penalize her for, for that, <laughs> you know, but there are the layers to it. The, the layers to it that I want to get back to it is that if she, being a woman, right, it's already a negative going against her. Being Latina is already, uh, Latina is already a negative, a strike against her. You know, being a, a white Latina, then, okay, that's, that's a leg up already. <laughs> There's a leg up that she's got there, right? Uh, you know, being someone that is conventionally, you know, if, 
we can even call it that attractive, that's already another leg up, right? Because that's one of the things that Gina Torres uh, said, for instance, she said, you know, they, they want their Latinas to look Italian. <laughs> and she's, go, she's got it going on right there. She's got it. You know, she's got her curves. So that has benefited her. That has opened doors for her, right? Those, those things. But, at the, you know, we can't forget that there is xenophobia. By the privileges that she's, that she's got, we also have to understand that, you know, it's, it's for a lot of people, even from, from for advocates, I get it. I get where they're coming from because Sofia, you know, in her country, she looks like an oppressor. <laughs> but here, right? She's gonna get a lot more benefits to the, from from a Latino who's darker. That's just the that's just the reality of things. But she's still gonna be discriminated because she's a woman, right? Because she's Colombian, because she's from Latin America, and because she has an accent. Her grievances, right, are valid. You know, you can have all your critiques about her, but I think we have to be fair about. It. We have to be fair, and she's right about the fact that had she been had she not had a, an accent. Yeah, she would have played a lot more role. They would have given given her a lot more roles. And he, uh, yeah, you you want to you you can go and talk about Salma Hayek and other women that have gotten, but it's not it's it's she's like a one of the few. It's, it's not that very many. It's not that very many. She's like one of a few. And her trajectory, right, is entirely different than, than, than Sofia Vergara. Sofia didn't come from uh, an acting world. She came from a host. She was a, a host in in Latin America in, in Colombia, right? Uh, she was doing reality shows and and Salma Hayek came from from acting from novelas and a different class of, of privilege because Salma Hayek did come from privilege you know people don't don't want to talk about that thing don't want to talk about it because they think okay you're a latino you're an immigrant you automatically you know are suffering you're you're automatically you know you, you you get you get some discrimination but there are levels to it and i think for sofia we have to understand where that is coming from and why she wouldn't be considered especially as as a you know, sex bomb, right? This is what, what people are going to consider her. And in the roles that she's she's chosen, right? The roles that she's chosen. And I think I, would, I wouldn't I would penalize her for it because I don't think it would have been difficult for her. Sometimes you have to, you know, the, 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 the lanes are there and it's either that lane or nothing, right? And that's how it happens to us in many, many different industries. Many, I'm talking about many. All the, uh, we, we, for the most part, we in the Western world and here in the U.S., we have to do things that we don't want to do. Sometimes those things hurt us in our communities, but because we need to survive at the moment, that's what we got to take. Take so, Sophia. I think she's making the best of what she can, right? With with what she can, and I think and also, right? When it comes to Griselda, if we talk about people, we want to talk about roles, and I, I know I'm going over it right now. We, we want to go. We want to talk about roles, right? And I'm gonna compare, it, you know, to to the Italian American uh, community when it came to when it came to filmmaking, right? Because they elevated their craft during the seventies, with you know a lot. There's some mafia films too, which a lot of Italians are not gonna like. They don't want to be associated with that. But the difference is, right? You know, with those films is that, and and us considered right a drug dealers, right? We're getting those roles, right? For, for the most part, as drug dealers, as, as low level uh, drug dealers, right? is that Griselda is the main character. And that's what was happening with the Italian community, playing, and the Italian directors writing main characters and play, and having Italians playing main characters. Griselda is a main character. There's a difference between a low level, you know, I wouldn't say, a, a low level is, is, is a harsh word for a character, right? Because you can play a character like that, but what they were, we were getting were one dimensional characters. With Griselda, she has a little more leeway to, to be, to, to be uh, three-dimensional, right? To have more, um, to have more range. And that's what happened with the Italian-Americans, right? You're the lead here, you know? In, in these films, we weren't the leads, you know? Uh, so there's a difference between that. And if you also want to go into the whole um, humanizing, right? Uh, Griselda, who was very vicious, then yeah, that's fair, that's, uh, that's valid. We can get into that, but that would require another conversation right and not to justify right not to i don't condemn or condone the the character in, or, or in, in the show but the person again yeah she was vicious but if you want to talk about art right the art of, of filmmaking and, and, and shows there has been a lot of evil people that have been humanized you know that and, and <laughs> in these shows and these films right and i don't think for us it's like i wouldn't i wouldn't focus so much on, on griselda the person right but I will focus more on Sophia and what she's doing with the show. As long as she's doing, you know, she's playing a great character. That's what I'm hearing. She's she's doing great with it. If she's doing great with it, she's hiring Latinos, writers too, uh, and directors. If she's leading that, then hey, by all means, I support her in that. Uh, everything else, you know, I think is for the birds. Everything else is just noise. 
But tell me what you got to say about that. What do you think? 